Next.js is a great tool for creating websites. However, just like React used to be with state management, Next.js doesn't actually care how you provide content to it. And there are many different possibilities. There are loads of content management systems or CMSs that have been created just to solve that very problem. But if you're a solo developer or a small team, you don't need to pay for an external service. There is a better solution and that solution is Markdown. Allow me to explain first why I use Markdown with Next.js and why it might be a good idea for you too, if you use Next.js. Two, what problems I encountered while I was working with Markdown. And three, how I use a tool called Content Layer, which is actually just a library, an SDK, to solve these problems. Let's dive in. First, why do I use Markdown when I'm creating content for Next.js? I've used Markdown whenever I can, both for my personal websites and for work. Now, there are many reasons why I favor Markdown. Why? Well, because Markdown gives you freedom that other solutions don't. First, it's free. Second, you don't need any additional tools. It's a simple text file. This means that you can edit it in any text editor, even your IDE. You don't need to log into anywhere. This means there isn't any vendor lock-in. The fact that it's a text file means that you can track your content in Git itself. And because Markdown is a recognized format, it's easy to import and export. If need be, you can start with Markdown and move to something else later if you grow out of it. And the nice thing about Markdown is that you can add any additional data that you like using something called front matter, which is YAML formatted data at the top of the file between two lines of three dashes. Using front matter allows me to define specific data for my blog posts, portfolio items, pages, and more. In fact, for any content. For example, for portfolio items, my front matter looks like this. You can see I've defined some strings like the title, the path to the image, the prompt, and more. And I've defined some numbers, namely here width, height, and also I've defined a date. And for blog posts, my front matter looks like this. As you can see, some fields like title, slug, and date are common between the two. Others like the prompt, the width, or the category are specific to the given type of format. As you might also be able to read, YAML gives us the flexibility to create more complex data types. Here, tags is a list of strings, and the alternate links, the alt key, is a list of key value objects. However, with great flexibility comes great responsibility. To phrase things differently, this flexibility is also Markdown's biggest problem. For example, I realized that in some places I had written tag instead of tags. In other places, I use image instead of featured image. And that content is being fed into my code, so it expects the fields to be named in a certain way. With Markdown, I don't have any way of enforcing the shape of the data stored in the front matter. And that's a shame because I'm a fan of typed languages, of TypeScript. What's more, retrieving content is a chore. Once I set it up for the first time, I copy pasted what I'd done between projects. To use Markdown, you need to use the file system library, FS. Use it to list all the files, to load them, to pass them, and so on. However, if there's two things that I've learned as a developer, it is first that reading and writing files at runtime is to be avoided as much as possible. Second, that copy pasting code is bad. On both these counts, the way that I was using Markdown was leaving a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. So what solution did I find? Well, first I tried pre-passing all the files at build time using some custom code. Then I created a JSON with all the content. That allowed me to load the content catalog as an import directly in my code. However, I still had incoherent types and the setup contained a lot of custom code. So I started wondering about coding some checks for the shape of the data that was contained in the front matter. However, around the same time, I was looking at the work of Shad Cien. Shad Cien created the UI library with the same name, which I'm looking into. And he's also working on a GitHub repository called Taxonomy, which I recommend you also take a look at. Taxonomy has a lot of interesting code if you're into Next.js, stuff like database integration and Stripe integration. And in the taxonomy repository, he mentioned that he was using a library called Content Layer. So I looked into it to see what it was all about. And I very much liked what I saw. So much so that I swapped out all of my Markdown management code this weekend in my website and replaced it with Content Layer. Why? I mean, other than the fact that I'm a sucker for punishment and I like trying out new things. Well, Content Layer does everything that I was trying to code for myself with Markdown. You start by defining a schema for your content. For example, my schema for portfolio items, 
looks like this. As you can see, the name here matches the type in my content. And I define the path to where my content is stored. And then I also define the different fields, their type and whether they're required or not. For example, title, slug and image are required strings. Width and height are required numbers and prompt is an optional string. I tell content layer what kind of content I have and where it's stored by calling the make source function. Using all the information that I provided to it, content layer then reads all the files that match the paths that I've provided. It checks that the front matter fits the schema that I've defined. It checks that there aren't any additional fields that I haven't defined. It checks that all the required fields are in fact present and that the fields all have the right type of data in them. Using the schema, content layer then defines a TypeScript type that I can use in my code and an accessor that provides me with all the content of that given type. This means that all my complicated file system manipulations using FS and all my front matter passing is now replaced with a simple import all portfolios portfolio from content layer slash generated. I spent the weekend implementing content layer in my code but you know what took so long? Truth be told, cleaning up my code was quick and easy. What took time was going through all the problems that Content Layer kept finding in my content. So now not only is my code a lot cleaner and shorter, but my content is a lot cleaner too. Okay, but I've cleaned up my content. How do I track it and keep it organized? Well, I'm using Notion to track my Markdown content and I'm connecting to their API. I'll explain more in the next video and I'll see you there. I've also provided links to interesting content in the description. In the meantime, let me know in the comments if you have any questions.